Hello, I'm Faith from the Elastic Agent team, and I'm going to talk through how to configure the new Kafka output support that was added uh, in 8.10. Um, just to just as the initial setting, I have created an empty cluster here uh, in Elastic, and I have also um, on uh, Confluent created an empty Kafka cluster. Um, there are many ways to set up Kafka, and each you know each user will probably have a different configuration. But um, Confluent gives some nice uh, hosted setup, and so I'll be uh, demonstrating it with that. Um, the first thing I'm actually going to do is um, create some topics. So with Kafka, you're ingesting all of your data into different topics, which can be uh, configured. Um, I'm going to create a topic called agent default. Um, and I've for for both the Kafka and the um, Elastic setup, I've, I've basically used defaults for everything. Um, with uh, some minor exceptions. So um, I'm also going to create a secondary topic. Um, agent syslog so that you can see an example of ingesting data into multiple topics at the same time. All right, um, so this is our Kafka setup. Now we have two topics. Um, there is no data there yet. So let's take a look at the uh, Kibana side. So the first thing we need to do now is um, I'm going to go to Fleet and settings uh, to where it says outputs. And I'm going to add an output. Um, I'm going to call my output, I guess, Kafka output. I'm going to change the type to Kafka. Um, and it will remind me that this is now in beta. But um, now most of the configuration here is going to be just copying fields over from your Kafka host, whether that's um, something hosted like with Confluent or whether it is something that, you know, a customer is running on-prem or something like that. Um, so let's take a look at uh, clients. Um, now with this particular uh, hosting service, um, you can see that it shows uh, choose your language at the top here and there's like a whole bunch of different um, scripting languages that you can use. Um, you can choose any of them because all we really care about is the, a few of the core settings. So I'm going to create um, I'm going to create a security key here. Um, and now I'm going to be able to use these settings um, to copy into Kibana. So the important ones that you care about are the bootstrap servers, that is the Kafka brokers. So I'm copying this here. Um, this will be the, the URL basically of, of what Kafka servers you initially connect to. Um, one uh, subtlety here that, that can trip you up is uh, a lot of URLs you will, will have, you know, HTTP or something at the beginning. Kafka URLs do not have that. So um, if you put HTTP um, at the beginning of this, then the connection will actually fail. So make sure that this is just a bare host name and then the port. Um, all right, so that's that's where we're going to connect. Now we need the authentication. Now, if you have a particularly simple connection um, that's just sending everything over plain text and no authentication, then we're already done. Um, but you know, most production uh, systems will have some kind of authentication. Um, for the default on Confluent here is you can see security.protocol equals SASL SSL, um, SASL mechanism equals plain. Um, and you can see that corresponds in Kibana to authentication. We're using a username and password and SASL mechanism plain at the bottom here. Um, there are two other SASL mechanisms that are commonly used um, that we support here. Um, you'll need to match this, this setting to whatever the user has deployed. So now I'm going to copy the username and password from the Kafka cluster. Um, here's one of the very important 
settings that I don't need to, to change at the moment, which is the server's SSL certificate authorities. Um, now, if you're using some kind of nice hosted service like Confluent, um, you probably won't need to set this. Um, it will probably already have certificates where everything is configured correctly. However, a lot of clients, especially uh, a lot, a lot of users, especially if they have Kafka set up on their own network, will have a custom certificate authority that you'll need to include here in order to properly verify their certificate. Um, this is important because a lot of customers do not realize that they have this custom certificate authority, um, and so they will sometimes say that there is none. Um, but you know, it, it often it often needs one here. Now, one thing you can do to check whether that's the case is to is this next field down here is verification mode, um, which I have set to full. Full verification means it will do full verification of the certificate and its host name and that everything matches. Um, if you um, if you are trying to figure out if you're having a certificate problem, if if it's uh, you know if you aren't connecting and you think it might be because the certificate setup is wrong. You can change this to none and see if it connects. If it connects when verification mode is none, then you know that your connection is mostly OK, but the certificate setup is wrong. And so you need to either you know, figure out the certificate authority or otherwise um, correct the certificate or the host name. Um, that is, of course, not recommended for production, but um, it's an option when you're troubleshooting. But for now, I'm going to keep this on full. Um, Partitioning is something that you will rarely need to mess with too much, but um, it's just uh, some special ways to um, allocate the data in particular ways in the topic. Um, some customers will uh, will want to use that. Um, the one th the one I am going to show you now is the topic. Um, so when you ingest to Kafka, you need to say what topic you're going to use. So I'm going to use a default topic of agent default, which is that topic that I created in the Kafka cluster earlier. Um, and then I'm going to add one more row here. Um, this is a way to ingest data to multiple topics depending on the content of the event. So what I'm going to try here is I'm going to say uh, when a particular field equals a particular value, then we're going to instead send it to agent syslog. And um, this this text box is a little confusing. It's not it's not obvious immediately what needs to go here. Um, I think this is maybe um, one of the artifacts of of this still being in beta. But um, the the what you need to put here is the name of the field colon and then the value of the field. So I'm going to put data stream dot data set, which is a field on the event colon system dot syslog. Um, so this will, this means that whenever events come in where the data stream dot data set field equals system dot syslog, then instead of sending it to agent default, it will send it to the agent syslog topic. All right, I think that is about all we need for right now. There's a variety of advanced settings, um, but a lot of these you will not need to mess with at least at first. Um, so save and apply settings. All right, now, um, now I have that output created, and now I need to create a policy that sends data to it. So I'm going to create agent policy. Let's call this Kafka policy. Um, and I'm going to open advanced options. Um, scroll down until you see output for integrations and output for agent monitoring. So this is where the actual data um, is sent from this from this policy. And so I'm going to select those, and I'm going to point both of them at Kafka output instead of default. All right, create agent policy. All right, Kafka policy. I'm now going to add an agent to this policy. Um, and I'm going to enroll in fleet. I'm going to do the usual thing. I have already downloaded the elastic agent uh, binary. So I'm just going to copy this last line to get the install command. Um, and 
in this terminal, I have my uh, elastic agent directory. So I'm just going to run this. All right, so now I have an agent on my local laptop that is in the middle of enrolling um, with this with this Kibana instance. Um, it is waiting for a connection. Um, when it connects, um, one of the things that is different about uh, sending your data through a Kafka output is, you know, we will see this agent enrollment here, but we will not see any data coming in in the Discover tab. Um, the Discover tab is showing you, you know, everything that comes into uh, Elasticsearch, but because we've changed the outputs for this um, particular policy, it's not sending any data to Elasticsearch. It's sending everything to Kafka. Um, so instead, we're going to need to look at our Kafka install to see the data and to confirm that it's being ingested. The install process sometimes takes a minute or two. There we go. One agent has been enrolled. All right. Um, all right, so uh, now we need to go back to Kafka. Now, for, for me, this means going to um, the Confluent web page, opening topics. Um, and here I can um, look at the agent default topic. Um, I can open the messages tab, and this will show data as it starts coming in. And we can see that data has started coming in now. Um, so these are events. Uh, in this Kafka topic. Now, if you aren't using a hosted service like Confluent, um, you'll need to check the data is there in some other way. So the, um, basically any Kafka client um, that, that can read from a topic can be used to verify that this data is being ingested. So if you want, you can actually set up FileBeat with a Kafka input um, and point it at the agent default topic and use all the same settings that we did earlier for the um, for the broker and so on. Um, and if you're able to read from that, then that will tell you if the data is coming in. Um, also, you know, you, you probably saw the, when looking at clients here, um, uh, oh, no, that was, well, it isn't visible right now. So the, um, you can find a snippet of code in basically any scripting language imaginable. Um, to just quickly read something from a Kafka topic. And you'll need to do the same thing that we did earlier um, where you, um, you know, copy the username and password, um, possibly the um, certificate authority um, and the broker URL and et cetera. Um, but anything like that will show you that it's ingested. And here you can also see um, if I go to the agent syslog topic, um, for this I actually have to rewind back to the beginning to see the existing data. So you can see that um, data is being ingested to both the agent log topic and the agent default topic. So um, uh, I can download the I can download the JSON for this, but I'm maybe not going to worry about that too much. But the important thing is that um, if you if you look in these fields, you will see that the um, events that are showing up in this topic are the ones where that data stream .data set field matches the system .syslog value that I that I configured in Kibana. Um, so um, so great. So we have data ingesting to both topics um, based on the contents of the event. Um, we can assign this policy to however many agents we want, um, and. Uh, and so we have we have now successfully set up uh, the Kafka output for 8.10. So um, good luck and thanks so much.